Okay, this video is on direct and indirect variation problems. And take a look in your notes there at example number one. It says y varies directly as x when y equals 2, x is equal to 10. What is the value of y when x equals 13? So these types of problems are fairly common and they almost always have some kind of statement that is kind of similar to this first sentence here. Y varies directly as X. And you might think that's kind of an odd way of phrasing, Y varies directly as X. But it, again, it's a fairly common way of introducing a problem like this. Y varies directly as X. What that means, it essentially means this. Y equals some number times X. And what, the first thing we want to do is to figure out what this number is. And the way we do that is we take this information. When y equals 2, x equals 10. So we just plug that in here. When y equals 2, x equals 10. And now I can solve this equation for my value of k. So if I divide both sides of this equation by 10, then I can determine, I'm just going to write this in decimal, 2 divided by 10 is 0.2. Well, I've just determined that the value of k for my direct variation function here is going to be 0.2. So now I take this value of k and I essentially plug it in to this first formula here that I wrote down and this becomes y equals 0.2 times x. And this right here, this formula, this equation, this is called the function of variation. In other words, this function right here, it kind of it defines this problem right here. So now that I know what my function variation is, it's very easy to answer this question. What is the value of y when x equals 13? Well, when x equals 13, I just plug 13 in here for x, and y equals 0.2 times 13, which if you punch that in your calculator, you get y equals 2.6. Example number two, y varies inversely as x. So again, this first sentence here in example number two, this tells me that I am working with not a direct variation problem, but an inverse variation problem. And when I see y varies inversely as x, that tells me immediately that y equals k over x. This is going to be an inverse variation function. And just like before, the first thing I want to do is figure out what is my value of k. That's called the constant of variation. So I can figure that out based on this information here. It tells me when y equals 8, x equals 3. So I plug those values in. y equals 8, x equals 3. And now again, I have an equation that I can use to solve for k. If I write 8 as 8 over 1, then I have 8 over 1 equals k over 3. I've got a proportion. I can cross multiply. 1 times k is k equals 3 times 8, which is 24. Now I know what my constant of variation is. I plug that into my original formula, and that gives me my function of variation. y equals 24 over x. And again, this is my function of variation. Well, now that I know my function of variation, I can answer this question. What is the value of y when x equals 10? I just plug in x equals 10 to my function. y equals 24 divided by 10. And 24 divided by 10 is 2.4. Now let's take a look at a word problem involving direct or indirect variation. Example number three. The number of gallons of fuel used on a trip varies directly with the number of miles traveled. Again, this is telling me I've got a direct variation problem. Now instead of using X and Y, I'm going to be using G and M, but I'm still going to write my original, my, I'm going to write my first 
uh, equation here the same way. So the number of gallons varies directly with the number of miles traveled. G varies directly with M. G equals K times M. And again, I would like to figure out what this value for K is. What's my constant of variation? Well, if a trip of 270 miles requires 12 gallons of fuel, that's my second piece of information. I'm going to use that to determine what K is. So a trip of 270 miles requires 12 gallons of fuel. So when my miles driven is 270, so that gets substituted in here for miles driven, and that's going to take 12 gallons of fuel. So that 12 goes in here for G. And again, I've got a simple algebraic equation here that I can solve. Divide both sides by 270. And now I know that my value for K, if I punch that into my calculator, I get 0 0.0444. Now that I know my value for K, I can plug that into my function of variation. So G equals 0 0.0444 times M. Here's my function of variation. Now I can answer my question. How many gallons are required for a trip of 400 miles? That means the number of miles driven is going to be 400, so I substitute that in here for M. 0 0.0444 times 400. And if I punch that into my calculator, I get 17.76 gallons.